Today the topic I will be covering is paediatric upper respiratory infections. This will include croup, epiglottitis and diphtheria. Starting with croup, the, sign the, the common cause of croup are parainfluenza virus 1, 2 and 3, respiratory syncytial virus and measles, but measles is a rare cause due to the vaccination programme. The symptoms or signs, should I say, of croup are a bark, so I like to think of it as croup dog, barking cough, a hoarse voice and a harsh strider, specifically when the child is upset. These are caused by subepiglottic edema, exudate and inflammation. Croup can be treated at home, usually with steroid treatment such as dexamethasone or prednisolone. It usually affects children under six years old and epidemics usually occur in the autumn. Things to watch out for though with croup are Restlessness, cyanosis, an increased pulse rate or respiratory rate, fatigue and sternal retraction because these symptoms all suggest a severe infection of croup which would need to be treated with nebulised adrenaline. Okay, moving on to epiglottitis. And this is an example of a child with epiglottitis. As you can see, symptoms include snoring strider, which is constant, a whispering voice, drooling, a high temperature, and therefore, if any of these symptoms, are, uh, if any of these signs are there, you must not examine the throat. This is because it can cause obstruction. The first thing to do is contact the most senior anaesthetist available for them to, car to carry out a laryngoscopy. On laryngoscopy, if they see that the epiglottis is swollen and cherry red, it suggests epiglottitis. At this point, intubation would be needed before obstruction occurs. Only after this point can you then do bloods because bloods distress children and create more obstruction. The main cause of epiglottitis is H influenza type B. This strain of influenza is usually ampicillin resistant. Therefore, we need to use a third generation cephalosporin such as cefotaxin. Hydrocortisone has been used but there's no proven value. You can expect to extubate after approximately 24 hours. So, the important things between croup and epiglottitis is that if we compare the two, croup onset is over a few days, whereas epiglottitis is a sudden onset. There's a barking cough associated with croup, but no cough in epiglottitis. There's a harsh stridor when the child is upset in croup, but the stridor in epiglottitis is snoring and continuous. Now stridors are louder when the airway is larger, therefore the quieter the stridor the more obstructed the airway is, hence in epiglottitis it's a quieter snoring, whereas in croup it's a harsh stridor. In croup they're also usually apyrexial, whereas in epiglottitis they have a temperature. There's a hoarse voice in croup, whereas in epiglottitis it's more of a whisper. So now on to diphtheria. Diphtheria presents with tonsillitis, plus or minus a false membrane over the pharynx. With this, 
you can get motor palatal paralysis, which means when they swallow fluids, some fluids can escape from the nose. There is usually a muffled voice. Bronchopneumonia can be experienced. There can be a brassy cough preceding any obstruction of the airways. Dysphagia is a common sign. A nasal discharge and excoriated upper lip is associated with nasal diphtheria. It is important to swab below the membrane and examine on PCR to, d to tell whether diphtheria is present. Now, diphtheria is actually caused by the Corynebacterium diphtheria toxin. It's not the actual bacteria itself, but the toxin it produces that causes all these symptoms. The toxin can lead to polyneuritis, which usually affects the cranial nerves first. It can also cause myocarditis and involvement in the conducting system. Not only this, but it can lead to toxemia. All these three things can lead to shock. In the treatment of diphtheria, it is important to isolate the patient. They need to be treated with the antitoxin and erythromycin. Also, contacts of the patient need to be treated with seven days worth of erythromycin. Risks. Diphtheria risks are increased in the homeless, refugees, children between three and six years old and asocial families. There's also been a resurgence of diphtheria in northwest and central Russia. This means that travellers that were born before 1942 are at increased risk of contracting diphtheria if visiting these areas. That's because before 1942 there was no diphtheria vaccination programme. OK, that concludes my talk today on diphtheria, epiglottitis and croup. Thank you.